Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Jeremy Smith. As you guys may have seen, I do have an Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop playlist. It has been abandoned for quite a while now. So in 2020, I decided to get back to making some videos about software. Now, I do many different classes with people uh, in you know either one-on-one -on -one or even in uh, larger groups about different types of software like Lightroom and Photoshop. And one of the biggest questions that comes up is how on earth do I get started with Lightroom? How do I even get my images into the program to begin working on them? Adobe Lightroom is a little different because it's not an image browser like something like, say, Adobe Bridge. Um, it actually is a database, so you have to go in and tell Lightroom which images you want to be included in said database. Now, the other thing about Lightroom is these days there's actually two different versions. Adobe, they had the brilliant idea of giving the new program the same name. So they basically have Adobe Lightroom now. And then the Lightroom that we've known for all these years is now called Adobe Lightroom Classic. Today, we will be talking about Adobe Lightroom Classic. We will talk about Adobe Lightroom in a future video. First of all, whenever we get ready to get our images onto the computer, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and take the card out of the camera. Now, you can technically go ahead and plug your camera directly into the computer to do this as well, but I definitely prefer just to take the card out and use a card reader. It's just a lot faster. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Let's see here, go over there, okay. And the moment you go in and plug in uh, your memory card, <clears throat> a lot of times the program will pop up a little dialog box um, that basically asks you, you know, what you want to do. And uh, this is the point where you would normally just go and click on import and they go straight into the program. And this totally works. But one thing about Adobe Lightroom is it kind of wants to manage everything for you. And uh, it kind of wants to, you know, put the images where um, it wants to put them. Now, this is not really a bad thing. And I mean, you can do this many different ways, but I'm going to just show you guys my preferred way of doing this today. So instead of going in and letting Lightroom copy the images where I want uh, them to, or where it wants to copy them, or instead of using the Lightroom interface to point the program in a different location, I like to go ahead and copy my images to the computer first in a location where I know where they're going to be with the file structure that I maintain. And then I just tell Lightroom to go ahead and include the images from there. So you can see uh, this is our, uh, our import dialog and these are all the images that are on my memory card now. <clears throat> you can see up over here in the top left hand corner, this is where we're basically recording our, our uh, bringing in our images from. And then over on the right hand side is where the program wants to put them. And of course I could go over here and I could change this to another source if I wanted to do that. But instead of fiddling with any of this, um, I actually don't even do anything here as far as copying the actual files. For the time being, I'm actually gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on cancel. And I'm gonna minimize Lightroom for just a moment. And I'm gonna go over to um, just my computer, uh, like uh, File Explorer here. And over here, I have a lot of different drives on this machine, but I have this drive that's called Photo Archive, and this is where I store my images. I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to go ahead and create multiple windows here. Okay, so now over on the left hand side, I have one window and I'm going to go ahead and click on that uh, removable drive, which is my memory card and go in here and go in there. And then there's the images that I have on my card. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here on this side and I'm going to create a new folder. Now I like to go in and sort of like create folders based on date information. So I'll go in and I'll have like a, I'll have like a date first and then I'll have a little bit of a description of how I want my files or, or what, what, uh, what the files are. So like uh, I'm going to just create a new folder and I'm going to give it today's date and I'm going to call it 1-27-20 because that's today. And we're going to call this folder Adobe Lightroom Classic Import Video. And you can see this folder is now empty. 
Then I'm gonna simply just go in here and select my images and copy paste. Um, I could go over here, I could even drag them over. You can do this many ways, but I'm gonna just give it the old uh, <laughs> Control A plus Control C and then Control V. I'm kind of a computer nerd, so I like my keyboard shortcuts. But yeah, you could totally just grab these images and drag them over. It's gonna do the same thing. Okay, so now we've already gone ahead and we've copied these files to the location where we wanted them to be. So at this point, I'm gonna go down back to Adobe Lightroom again, and I am going to go and click on Import again, just like this. You can get to the Import dialog, of course, a few different ways, just like most software. We can go to File and Import uh, Photos and Video, or we could go over here and just click on where it says Import. Either one gets the job done. And you can see uh, Lightroom is going to still continue to default to that removable uh, disk, which is our memory card, because that's kind of what it's programmed to do, because it knows, hey, this is not a device that's going to be uh, sticking around, and it's assuming that this is where you want to copy things from. But basically, we've already gone ahead and done the copy step. So at this point, we've gotten the images copied off the memory card. Now we just want to tell Lightroom where we copy them to, and then go on about our day. So if I come up here, I'm going to change this from removable disk. I'm going to go over to where it says other source. And then I'm going to just simply navigate to the location of the drive where my images are stored, which in this case is this photo E. Then I'm going to go over here, uh, my pictures. And I put this into a folder that says, um, let's see here, it's called camera test. And then if we look in here, you'll actually notice that we do have our files right there. 127.20 Adobe Lightroom Classic Import. So select folder, and then there they are. Now, here's a very important step. Up at the top, you'll notice that there's a few different options here. You see an option that says copy as DNG, copy, move, and then add. At this particular step, we would wanna make sure that add is selected. And the reason being, is because we don't want to copy uh, as DNG, that's going to convert our file type. That's something we could get to in another video. Um, we don't want to copy the files. We don't want to have two copies of these images. Um, and we certainly don't want to move the images because we've already put them in a location where we wanted them to be. So at this point, we just go to add. And I always told people to think of add as uh, saying include in database. You know, we're basically telling Lightroom that the files in this folder need to be included as part of its catalog. So we have that selected. And we could go through here and, you know, kind of check and uncheck multiple images if we wanted to. Um, we're in what we call the grid view in Lightroom, which is indicated by this little uh, sort of like grid looking, tile looking sort of icon here. We could go to loop view if you wanted to like this, and that would allow us to actually go through our images one at a time, and we could decide whether or not we actually want to um, import these. You know, you have a little option to include an import down there. But what I told people to do is, I told people to just go ahead and import everything that you've copied, and in Lightroom there are some uh, pretty powerful culling options, so you can go through and you can quickly narrow down which images you want to keep and which ones you don't. So I just say go ahead and import everything at this step, there's an option over here that says build previews. It says one to one, minimal, embedded in sidecar standard. Um, if you don't want to have to wait on Lightroom to like render an image after you sort of zoom in, you can go ahead and click on one to one. I usually leave mine uh, selected uh, on, and I just usually leave it on one to one all the time. Uh, don't import suspected duplicates. This is good to have checked because a lot of times if you, you know, have already imported images in Lightroom, this will prevent you from importing them twice. And there is a thing up here that says build smart previews, and that's a whole video all to its own. But long story short, if you're working on, say, a laptop machine, um, now I'm working here on a desktop and all the drives uh, are going to be basically connected all the time. But if you're working on a laptop machine and you copy these uh, files to an external hard drive, which is something I do recommend because you don't want to take up a lot of space on your laptop's internal storage, um, you may not always have that external drive with you. And so if you go ahead and build smart previews, those smart previews allow you to still see your files 
in Lightroom and still even do some basic edits even when you don't have that external drive plugged in. And then when you plug the external drive in again, everything kind of gets all synced up. So if you're working with a laptop workflow and an external drive, that's something that you definitely want to check. Uh, it's very, very useful. I'm not going to check it right now just because I'm not working on an external drive. Um, and then let's see here. We don't want to, we don't have the option to make any secondary copies because right now we're not making any copies at all. We're basically just adding. And then we could go in here and add to collection. Again, this is a whole uh, video all to itself. We could get to that later on. But if we want to do that, we could do that at this step. And then we also have some other things we can apply during our import. Um, if we wanted to go in here and add any keywords, we could do that. Which keywords can be very, very good. None of us photographers use keywords nearly as much as we need to. But basically that allows us to go in and, uh, you know, be able to come back to our images and kind of, you know, sort by different keyword criteria. And there's, a, there's no better time to go and include those keywords at this stage because if you don't do them now, you probably will never do them again. If you do that, you would basically go in and uh, basically separate them all by commas. And that's kind of how that would play out. You could also do some develop presets at this point too. If you knew, for example, that you shot a bunch of images and you knew, you wanted them all to be black and white and you had a certain black and white preset for that, you could have the program go ahead and apply this, uh, apply that preset at this stage. I'm not going to do that just because I'm not going to be getting into any editing in this video. Okay, and that's basically about it. Uh, once you have everything set, you can go over here and go to import. And as you can see, here are images. Everything is all imported. We can go through things from here. Uh, not difficult at all, very, very straightforward. If you guys have any questions, feel free to write me in the comments below and let me know what other types of uh, Lightroom tutorials you guys would like to see. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.